In Dissidia NT, there are several properties that attacks can have. The main property is if they are bravery attacks or HP attacks. I don't think I need to explain what the differences are between those. The second main property is if they are melee attacks or projectile attacks. These are called close range attacks and long range attacks in game, but I think those names can be a bit confusing. For example, Pistola's Bizarra is a projectile attack that hits at close range, but calling it a close range long ranged attack is a bit. um. yeah. One attack can have both melee and projectile properties, though not on the same hits. The main thing that separates melee and projectile attacks is that every projectile has a projectile strength. The anomalous projectiles can almost be considered melee attacks, but there is a difference when it comes to parries. There are also two types of projectile attacks that I want to specifically mention. The search types and the traps. The search types are projectiles that appear at the target's position. The traps only activate and interact with things when an opponent enters their range. Tracking is an attack's ability to aim or to follow a moving target. The target is locked in the moment the first input for that attack is pressed. Tracking often ends 20 frames before the attack is active. Attacks with multiple hits can have a slight tracking adjustment for each hit, and melee attacks will often auto-adjust on hits, even if they hit another target. Most projectile attacks have tracking as the projectile is flying. Slower projectiles have more tracking. There is also a tracking threshold distance, which means that projectiles stop tracking once they come within a certain distance of the target. There are some attacks that can be aimed, but only within a limited area around the target. Combo priority is a property that means that when a character is in hit stun from one combo chain, then they will not be affected by the hit stun from another attack. Most projectile combo chains do not have combo priority. The hit stun during melee attack combo chains cannot be interrupted by bravery attacks, but can be by HP attacks. The hit stun during an HP attack can only be interrupted by HP damage. Not even the bravery part of HP attacks can interrupt it. Certain combo chains do not need to connect in order to complete the chain. This is true for all projectile attacks with multiple inputs, and for a few melee attacks as well. The move lists in the game call this property a combo extender, but that is not what that term means. Jack's fake out would be an example of a combo extender. Though, the term is heaps better than the opponent cannot recover during a combo description that they used to have. The Japanese term translates to forced combo. The blowback of most melee attacks and a few projectile attacks are able to cause the opponent to stick to a wall for a short while. The distance from where the opponent can be wall splatted from depends on the attack. If the opponent hits the wall from outside the wall splat range, or if the attack cannot wall splat, then they will bounce off the wall instead. Should the opponent be wall splatted a second time before recovering from their hit stun, then they will become invincible for a short while. Certain attacks can be charged by holding down the button. In addition to adjusting the timing of the attack, this can increase range, damage, duration, or add some other effects. Glide is a property that means that you can move freely during an attack. It is found on projectile attacks as well as on Kuja's melee attacks. Most projectile attacks that include several projectiles, and most of those that can be charged, have glides. Some single hit projectiles do as well. Some glides last all the way until the attack ends, and some only last until right as the attack comes out. Take note that glides on the ground cannot go over edges. There are some attacks that have horizontal movement in the direction of the analog stick. These then follow up into an attack, or can be cancelled into other actions. Attacks with the guard property gain the guard bubble during the animation. There are only three attacks with this property, and contrary to a normal guard, when they are hit by a bravery attack, they ignore the guard stun and do not lose guard stamina. With perfect defense, they can even guard HP attacks, but it causes them to enter guard stun. The plus version of Bitter N gains the HP attack guard property as well, but it will ignore guard stun from HP attacks. Parries function slightly differently from the guard property. If they block a melee attack, then the attacker will be staggered for a moment. Also, when an attack is parried, its hitbox disappears completely. There are two types of parries. 
The first type is tied to a bravery attack button. On a successful parry, these can be cancelled into mainly guard, dodge and bravery attacks, but not HP attacks. The second type are the counter HP attacks. On a successful parry, these will transition into an invincible counter attack. There are a few attacks that parries cannot block. With the exception of X-Death's Omniblock, they are all open to attacks from behind. Parries cannot block summon attacks or HP attacks, which include bravery attacks with HP level projectile strength. Bart's Mastered Knight and X-Death's Charged Omniblock can parry HP attacks. No parry can block attacks with the trap property, but sometimes the follow-up hits of the traps can be parried. Speaking of invincibility, other attacks also have invincibility during certain parts. Sometimes during invincibility, the character turns transparent, but the main way to see if someone cannot be hit is if the targeting icon is not blue. Invincibility occurs during warps as the character physically disappears for a moment. Related to these are the surge type jump attacks that are invincible from shortly after jumping up to right before hitting the ground. In addition, characters using those attacks cannot even be targeted. Bart gains invincibility during the startup of his mastered ninja. Colossal Shantoto is completely invincible, as is Teleport. Finally, some HP attacks that gain a longer animation because of certain conditions also gain invincibility from the moment after the first hit lands until the final hit. Some attacks have a vacuum effect. Vacuums slowly pull opponents toward a certain point. When two or more vacuums would affect a character, then you add up the strengths of all the vacuums. A few attacks apply a buff or debuff on hit. Landing that hit again will refresh that buff or debuff. However, when refreshing an attack buff or defense debuff, that hit will not benefit from that buff or debuff. As an example for this, X-Death's cursed debuff in Hexamode includes a defense debuff. Vacuum Wave deals this much damage in Berserker Mode, and with the debuff, it deals this much. However, in Hexer mode, Vacuum Wave deals this much damage both with and without the debuff. When X-Death uses White Dwarf, he gains the Cursed Debuff effect in his other modes. Now with this in Berserker mode, Vacuum Wave will only do the normal damage. Also, since the Cursed Debuff cannot override the Blight Debuff, attacks that apply the Cursed Debuff will then do the increased damage. Certain characters gain points to special hidden gauges when their attacks hit or are blocked. Garland gains chaos points whenever he lands a hit, but the points continuously slowly drain. When he gains 1800 points, he gains a level of his deranged soul passive, and the points are reset to zero. The points also reset when he loses a level when the duration ends. If he reaches 1800 points when at the second level, the duration of that level is reset. Ultimessia gains sorcery points when landing hits. Like with Garland, when she gains 1800 points, she gains a level of her Maleficium passive. Her points also reset when she gains or loses a level of the passive. Bart gains AP for his jobs in two ways, activating an attack and landing the final hit of the attack. When he has reached 500 AP for a job, he masters that job, giving him a permanent buff and making that attack stronger on subsequent uses. During Good Luck Charm, Bart gains twice the amount of AP from the final hit. Onion Knight in base form can gain ninja points or sage points depending on which attack he uses. When he reaches over 500 points for one of them, he then changes into that job. Should he get 500 points for both, he then changes into the one with the highest points. With Spirit Surge equipped, he gains 3 times the amount of points. Onion Knight only changes job when he returns to a neutral state, so he can keep cancelling the recovery of his attacks to delay it. 